Hi, I'm Monica from REW, and this is Ryan with me from MLA Canada. We're having our first sit down between the REW MLA talks together, and I think there is uh, many more to come with your colleagues as well. Uh, so thank you for answering some really tough home secret questions with me today. Oh, thank you so much for putting this together. Really enjoyed the time. Why, in fact, does a house cost so much? <laughs> I was hoping you could help me with that. Uh, I think it's a function of where that property sits within the community, right to so the neighborhood that it resides within, uh, the build quality of it, the thoughtfulness and the design that was behind that. Um, and then of course, like just the factor of market conditions, right? Mm -hmm. Like where are we in a market cycle? Where are lending rates at? Um, those are obviously incredible determinants and that's something that we're dealing with today. And, and, uh, and then what is the perspective long-term of value in the housing market? And I think it's the influence of all those factors that has a huge impact on what a home buyer is willing to pay and what a home seller is willing to part with. Something that's not always clear is pricing and the differences between pricing for resale and then pricing for pre-sale. And those are very two different things and are often changing as well. Can you maybe speak a little bit more on both of those? Sure, well, I think the first is just maybe to differentiate between yes. uh, the two and which each means. So resale would be uh, for the most part existing or used inventory on the market, right? And that would be the traditional uh, home. So condos, townhouses, uh, single family, all of us have probably been in one of those in the last 24 hours. And so there's there's those pieces of the market um, that would be used inventory and, and that is constantly changing hands, right? And we use real estate agents in order to broker many of those transactions. And again, you know, between home buyer and, and home seller. And then there's pre-sale, which for the most part um, are, are pieces of land that have been brought to life by a developer or a, a home builder. They've worked with an organization like ours. They've envisioned what those homes look like they've established what the build quality with the spec might look like and and it's our job to bring those stories to life to be able to kind of share exactly what someone could expect by living in that community and when we're talking about pre-sale which is what that is it's it's a forward bet on the market right and and it's something that a home buyer would look at and say well i don't need this necessarily today i'm willing to wait the two to three years for this building to actually complete construction um, but I'd like to secure my price today. Right. Uh, I'd like to secure a down payment through deposit today and have an opportunity to purchase this home in the, in the, in the future. As a first time home buyer, what would be the difference between pre-sale and resale? And if I did choose pre-sale, why? I think that if you're looking for pre-sale today and you're a first time home buyer, you're in a really good spot. And the reason why is because with pre-sales, you lock in a price today for tomorrow's value. Right? And, and more often than not, most pre-sales take anywhere from two to four years to complete. Right. And so we know that today's market today, we have high rates, right? Interest rates have gone up about 300 basis points over the last few months, and it's expected to continue to rise. Um, you have rising costs that are following those increase in rates as a result of inflation. And so what we're really expecting is, is those rates to be at the highest potentially over the next six to 12 months and then slowly ease back. Right. Uh, there's also the expectation that constant immigration, right, all throughout the Lower Mainland, um, with a lack of building supply, we know that that creates and really sways that that uh, demand supply metric. And so, locking in something for today's price for tomorrow's value, mm -hmm. knowing that in three to four years from now, when it does complete, likely the cost of a building is much higher, likely the demand for a building is very high, and likely rates are lower. Right. Right. And so, you take advantage of all of those market uh, forces. I think setting you up in a really strong way to have a really good purchase by the time that the building's actually ready for completion. Right. And in between now and then, you part with a small uh, deposit. Mm -hmm. Generally, for first time home buyers, anywhere from 10 to 20%, no mortgage required. And so, over the length of that time. Over the length of that time, that's yeah. right. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today for these chats. There are many more topics that we will be discussing, but really nice to hear your perspective and opinion. It was a pleasure. Thank you.